even though it's getting late, alhamdulillah, there is no place that we would rather be. And as we have heard in everything that has been said, these are gatherings that nourish us at the very, very, very depth of our being. These are gatherings that will be a means for a Muhammadan breeze to come when we most need it. We were listening recently to that a post that will come out soon, inshallah ta'ala, about one of our teachers telling a story about an individual who was having difficulty in his deen and made an intention to actually renounce his religion. But then at night he had become accustomed to sending the salawat upon our Prophet And he decided to still do those salawat and he started to then wrestle internally. There was a wrestling match between his heart and his mind. And he said that if I'm going to renounce my religion that means that the Prophet Muhammad is not telling the truth. And he says that is impossible. And it was remembering the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that moment and reflecting upon him and knowing with absolute conviction that he is true and that he tells the truth and everything that he brought is true and everything that he informed us about is true is what saved this individual. And this is what happens when we're in times of most need in the most subtle of ways that you can never possibly imagine. There is no possible way to put a price on gatherings of remembrance, on these moments of purity. These are what are going to really, really matter when we really, really need it. And as we've heard, is that even though we're only a few people here, from different places, this beautiful cornucopia of beauty, which is ultimately a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should make the intention to be here on behalf of our people, our other people that live in these lands that don't have the ability to be here. And then each intention that we make to be here for our people, there will be a channel that opens up for them to be able to receive. And that this is what we hope is that these lands become fertile for the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu Make the intention when you hear the moda and you're saying marhaban, marhaban, ya nur aini, and you're welcoming the light of your eyes. Without him we would be blind sallallahu He is truly the light of our eyes outwardly and of our essence and our entire being. Salawatul Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. Make the intention to welcome the messenger to these lands on behalf of our people. Make the intention to host him in these lands, metaphorically speaking, through the coming of his teachings. The way that Sayyidina Abu Ayyub and Ansari hosted him وسلم, when he reached Medina. Make the intention to serve any way in the beautiful poem that we heard last night from Sayyidina Nadar is that to welcome those who are like those blessed little girls did and to serve, even if it be holding the saddlebag, whatever it might be. This is true izzah, this is true honor. Everything in creation wishes to serve the Prophet ﷺ. And in these beautiful lines of poetry, the Shaykh Yusuf and Nabahani said when he was speaking about the sandals of the Rasul, which we wear on our head, because ultimately is that those blessed sandals ascended above the seven heavens. Is that he ascended وسلم, above the seven heavens and he was wearing his blessed sandals and all of creation was beneath him in a real way. وفي مقام القلب لم يؤمر بخلعنا له that Moses in the sacred valley of Tuwa was asked to take off his two sandals فخرعنا عليك إنك بالواد المقدس Tuwa you're in the sacred valley of Tuwa but our prophet in the station of proximity was not asked to take off his two sandals صلى الله عليه وسلم and there's deep 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 spiritual significance in that the maqam of Sayyidina Musa is great, but no one was as close to the Lord of the heavens and the earth 
like our Prophet Muhammad And then he goes on to say that Mithalin, that this image that he himself that created of how the sandal actually looks, this was an honor for him to serve it. That he goes on to say is that the tijan of the muluki hawasidu is that tamanna maqam al qurbi minhu al faraqidu is that the stars wished that they could be like the dust underneath these blessed sandals of our Prophet and the crowns of kings were envious. They wished they could as well. We will realize that one of the masters all of these adab is Sheikh Yusuf al Nabahani. He was someone that mastered Abdab. I am a servant of his servant of a servant of his servant servant and thus without any end. This is the way these people are. They realize the sharaf of the risala, the honor that the message that our Prophet brought وسلم, but the secret to all of this is opening up your light, your heart to the light of Sayyidina Muhammad. Whereby which that you have a deep profound, intimate connection with him sallallahu alayhi wa and you start to recognize that he is the sirat al-mustaqim he is the straight path and he is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the urwat al wuthqa when everything else fails and you become confused and even for people that may Allah protect all of us and our children and to yawm al-qiyamah ever to even have doubt in their religion the way back is in reflecting upon our Prophet Muhammad and that he is that that will never ever break our faith in him and our belief that what he brought was true and when that comes into the heart then you start to have people of substance you start to have people that then have something to offer you have people that will then that be drawn to that light. And if there was people that used to see light on certain ancestors of the Prophet Sallallahu foreheads because of him being in the loins, anything that is connected to that light will draw people. And this was even reflected in his blessed father Sayyidina Abdullah. What about then when we open up the light that of his teachings to come into our heart, people will recognize that. And they will realize that this is something that we all need. And this is what we come together for, with big intentions. Not because of anything that we have, but because we know the generosity of our Lord. We know the generosity of our Lord. It exceeds anything that we can possibly ask Him for, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we are taught to place our expectations and make them high. In His bounty, and in His fadl, not in our acts. And that our hope is by him giving his tawfiq to just do that, is that there will be that a divine outpour from his blessings upon us. Not just for us, but we hope that it extends to our family members and our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors and other people that are around us. And then this will translate into, in a very real way, each and every single one of us, inshallah, living up to our Adamic potential in sharing the blessings of this faith with the people that are around us. Nothing is more important. And nothing brings more happiness to the heart of the Rasul than serving his blessed deen. Embodying those realities and then serving the deen. Day in and day out. With every single interaction. Every single person that is that you meet. Praying for people. Having good character when you see people. Living up to what our Prophet taught us sallallahu alayhi wa this is what we want so that when we come to him is that this is what we want him to do and in closing this is what the Prophet did at the very end of the life of the Sahaba after he nurtured them and looked after them and trained them and taught them and raised them in his blessed beautiful way sallallahu alayhi wa and they became who they became the best people of all after that the prophets and messengers. No one was like the Sahaba. They were the very best hearts of all on earth. And they were the ones chosen to be with Sayyidina Muhammad. And in that blessed hadith in Sahih Bukhari, 
when Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is leading the prayer. And you can imagine the companions in that blessed masjid were all praying in the khushur and the reverential awe that could be seen on the limbs in their stillness. And the Prophet Sallallahu pulls back the curtain. And some of them almost broke their prayer because they were so excited that they thought the Prophet Sallallahu was well again that he was going to come back in and pray with him. And one of them noticed is that the Prophet was smiling when he pulled back that curtain. He was smiling. And think about the profundity of meanings behind his smile, Sallallahu Alaihi and it had been revealed before that is that I have perfected your religion for you I have completed my blessing on you and I am content to have Islam as your religion that had already been revealed this was very very late this was just before he passed but that smile indicated is that our Prophet وسلم, is that he had conveyed the trust and that he had advised his blessed ummah and they had bodied those realities. And that smile indicated now that he had fulfilled his mission. That is that he had conveyed the mission and that those verses indicated the qurb of the ajal of the Habib. That he was going to return to Allah soon. Because he wasn't meant to be here forever on earth. This is, world is not worthy of that. But when you attach these heart, your heart to these meanings, it makes it easier to get by. And to be patient with whatever is afflicting us, all of the difficulties that we are going through. This is the nature of dunya. But one of the greatest things of all that can get you through is when the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is unlocked in your heart. And you start to remove this rust so it starts to flow and then it starts to fill you up and then you become detached because you realize you can't remain in the world and ultimately be with your beloved you might see him from time to time here in this world it's possible to see him lies, and we've heard that but you can't really meet with him in the truest meaning of the word meeting until you return to Allah and this is what helps us get through. And this is what we all hope for. Is that Allah Taala bless us in moments like this. That this there be tazawud. And that we receive provision. That helps us at that time when we need it most. To get through this world. And to remain firm. And to bless us to be able to meet our Lord in a way that is pleasing to Him. And then when we encounter Rasulullah Wasallam, Is that we encounter Him. And he'd be smiling, and he'd welcome us, and he'd be happy to see us. And we'd be from those brothers that he spoke about, that he loved, and he longed for. Those people that have sacrificed anything to have been with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we be among them, and may we be from the elect of them. And may we spend our lives in doing what is most pleasing to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to his blessed messenger. And to be means for bringing life to the deen of Sayyidina Muhammad. And the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and all of the intention and all of the individual teachings of the, the deen of Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and bless us in all of our affairs. And inshallah Ta'ala protect and preserve us all until the day we meet him. May the very last thing that we say when we exit this world be La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah completely actualize its meanings inwardly and outwardly. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.